I put the radar signal here on my oscilloscope. I'll turn it on. And you'll see the waveform change. Hi, I'm Dave Schneider for IEEE Spectrum Magazine and this is the MIT coffee can radar. There may be a few hundred dollars in parts here but considering that you can use this not only uh, to measure speeds like a, a police radar gun, uh, it can actually be used to measure distances very well and even crudely as a synthetic aperture radar. So we're out of the local ball field and we're going to give the uh, MIT uh, Cantenna radar a run here. I've uh, got it set up. All I need to do is start recording and then I'm going to run down the track and back. While we're waiting for my laptop to process the data I just collected, let me give you a little bit of a close-in tour. As you can see, we have a couple of generic coffee cans. Inside the coffee can is just a little wire and that makes for our radar antenna. The RF electronics was the easiest to make. It's these little modules that are they're just screwed together. This is a voltage controlled oscillator. There's an attenuator here, which you can barely see under these wires. An amplifier here and a splitter. So part of the signal goes to this antenna, the transmitting antenna, and part of the signal gets fed into this mixer. From the receive antenna here, signal goes into another amplifier, is amplified and mixed comes through this wire here onto the board and then the audio comes out and into the, the microphone inputs and to the zoom recorder. I'm going to show you how to process the data now. You need a MATLAB script for that. Actually, uh, in this case, it's an Octave script. And Octave starts crunching on the data that we just recorded out in the ball field. You can see the results, a range time intensity plot. On the horizontal axis, you have range to your target, vertical axis, we have time, elapsed time from top to bottom. You see a general vertical grain here, a lot of uh, vertical lines. Those are just reflections from objects that don't move. Uh, but you also notice this reflector here that gets farther away as time goes by and then disappears and uh, reappears getting closer as time goes by. Uh, well, that's me. There's a second plot, a little more uh, processing done to cancel out that clutter, those static objects, and you see my reflection much more clearly going out, turning around, and coming back. Um, and you can see it, it registers me out to 50 meters or more, which is darn good for a radar system that you build in your garage. When I turned to try and make a synthetic aperture radar image, I discovered that I needed a really big target, a big water tower conveniently across the road from a building that had uh, a nice balcony. It took a little while. You have to um, move the radar across like about a hundred inches, moving it two inches at a time while gathering data, um, but it worked. Like I say, it's not the most precise uh, SAR image you'll see, but uh, not bad for a garage project. For IEEE Spectrum, I'm David Schneider.